Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, just wanted to go over where I'm at with stuff. Uh, I'm just piecing together a document on using interactive brokers for data retrieval in Linux. That's using also the um, the Java test client using Java, the Java API. So. Where we're at right now is quite simply a number of uh, things have come up. Due to the fact of uh, I'm pretty well dumping all and anything Windows related, uh, it looks like I'm forced to go on to interactive brokers uh, with uh, Linux. IQfeed does not support Windows, or uh, it does. It doesn't natively out of the box support Linux. So as a result. Um, I'm needing to go with interactive brokers as my data source instead of the um, IQ feed because I'm on Linux. So as a result, because of that, um, I've had to fool around with what's the best way of doing it. For now, I'm looking at Java and then having a, J a Java with a Redis um, embedded client using, I think it's Jettis, to push the latest data retrieved and push into a Redis instance. And then at the other end will be a client which will basically read in the data and uh, work a, a, uh, an algorithm around that. And then using an algorithm and, and the data in some kind of rolling window, be able to tr have a set of triggers uh, to initiate an order and then send that back through Redis to tell uh, the Java uh, end that's uh, going to be connected to TWS to uh, initiate an order. So that's what I'm kind of trying to build. Um, I have looked at other ways of doing this. I've looked at POSIX C++ com um, API for interactive brokers and it's kind of like Honestly, it's pure hell. And the other reason is just due to the fact that the POSIX library from what I've seen and talking to Ivan, um, who's really helped me in the summer over this, is that the POSIX cl uh, uh, client or API is quite a, a few years behind sometimes with the Java. It's not fully in sync, I could be wrong on that. But I'd rather just use Java uh, for uh, interactive brokers and the TWS. It's the most popular and it's also a lot easier to maintain than using um, the uh, C++ side. And that's also the POSIX because it's um, uh, Linux. So I've come up with a bunch of instructions to get this running. Now, I do have a link to someone get you started to install Interactive Brokers uh, TWS. So I have that here. Um, I'm also uh, putting in some instructions on how you can install the Java client uh, or the Java, well, sorry, the JDK. Um, you want to stick with more of the recent, more uh, mainstream Java 8. Um, also, with the TWS, uh, as I said, I've got lots of videos on how to set this up. But it's a really important reminder that um, from what I've seen so far, if you use the open JDK and um, having the TWS call it, it will freeze. It'll look like it's frozen. It'll load, but it'll freeze. So you have to in, uh, install using the Oracle uh, hotspot JDK. Okay, and I've got a series of instructions on how to do that here with a bunch of links. Okay, um, also there's some example code that you can use to call from Java into the TWS. I've not confirmed this particular one, if it works uh, from this site here. I have used it before and it seemed to run okay. But the one I'm more interested in is the actual interactive brokers, uh, Java client API or test client from interactive brokers uh, because I've decided to use um, Eclipse is my IDE. There is also a set of instructions that will instruct you how to get uh, Eclipse running with the Java test client. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. All right.
Oh, there's my famous Windows 10 bug. This is why we get off of Windows. This has been like this for three days. And, and even though I have Windows 10, you'd think the major feature of the start button. And when you get this kind of crap, that's why I'm off of Windows. Anyways, let's move that to the side. We can still function. All right. So let me just get into my Linux here. So where's my IDE? Okay, so here's Java right here. Now I've, I've loaded all the instructions that are part of um, what's provided from Interactive Brokers in that link that I just gave you, um, which is uh, right here, okay? Once you get that running, and, and it's very simple to, to set up, you'll be able to get it running. Now I have it running right now, let me just see here, uh, or do I? No, I don't. Okay, so you have API demo once you get it running. You can run as Java application. So uh, I just choose all the defaults here. And there we go. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, I've, I've shown you this before. Connect. And remember, you gotta, I, I got to keep reminding people. <laughs> uh, you'll sometimes not be able to figure it out. But when you get... Uh, the TWS running, make sure you go to the classic TWS mode, uh, choose configure, make sure under general, um, oh, sorry, API settings, make sure you, you click on enable active X and click off this read only if you want to send orders, okay? Uh, also, just to be sure that everything's running, click on all these options here under precautions, okay? Apply. Okay. Now we're ready to connect, uh, have our software connected to the TWS. Okay. So knowing what we know, uh, what you'll see here is when I connect into, it'll say already connected or connected, and it'll give you this uh, uh, data farm connection. Now we can go into market data. This is where it gets kind of tricky, unlike IQ feed, which is a lot easier. Um, here's some sample code that I want to show you. Um, first, uh, I've set this up in this document. Out of the box, uh, for, for this, you, you can uh, retrieve, let's say, IBM and get the latest uh, market data. Now, you do need to realize I'm running Interactive bro Brokers in demo mode, okay? Again, the credentials are I'll underscore EP demo is a user and demo user is password okay that will get you connected into TWS and then on top of that you got to do all that uh, API configuration I just showed you so knowing all that and connecting into it you can now just in this case I'm, I'm gonna request the latest info data from IBM using the smart exchange island uh, and that's it and it's a stock okay and, you, and we want it in US dollars. So now you'll see here, I'm able to retrieve the bid and ask on IBM, the stock, and uh, you get the bid and ask, okay? So now, which I've never really shown before, is how do you do it for uh, Forex? I believe this is how it works. They're doing some digging. Just so you know, there is a group on Yahoo that is specifically dedicated to interactive brokers API, so you can get that here. I just highlighted, uh, and then it's under TWS API. Okay, now when you've got all that uh, sort of figured out, what you need to do now is let's say we want to do um, a forex call. So typically, what we do here is uh, we're going to send over. In my case, it's Euro, Austrian dollar. Security type is cash. The exchange is Ideal Pro on island. The currency, the base currency, is I'm just going to leave it at US dollars. In this case, you can also set it British pounds as well if you want. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill in all that stuff. So um, let's figure all that out. So we're going to do the euro. Oh. Euro, cash. Okay. Um, the exchange is Ideal Idea Pro. Now I might be able to do 
something different. And then by that, we are choosing um, island still, and we're keeping our currency base cat uh, at US dollars. So let's request that. So you can see here, we've, we're grabbing now the latest data. This is all real time, okay? So that's how you could do Forex. Now, another one that I kind of want to do, and I'm going to stick with oil uh, as the future. And again, I got all this from that uh, Yahoo group. So we're going to do this one here and do an oil uh, futures contract, okay? Now, also what I need to stress here, when you're doing the futures, you need to put in the expiry. So in my case, for next month, 2015 and then 12 for the month. Let's do that. So we're gonna enter in CO. We're gonna choose futures. Uh, now I have to choose the expiry. So 2015, 12. Um, and uh, we'll do uh, the exchange, I believe, is we can just do NYMEX. And then um, I think we need to just keep it US dollars for now. So let's see what happens here. So this is typically when you've entered in something wrong. <laughs> you can see it's not doing something right here. Uh, let me just see here. Maybe I have to, oh, I think I have to maybe choose this being NYMEX. Maybe that's what it was. Leave that blank. There you go. So there's the futures. NYMEX is the exchange, and now you can get the contract for oil. Awesome. So with that in mind, uh, that's all I'm gonna really care about in terms of uh, data. Now, uh, because there's source code for this particular example, uh, as in, um, where's my Eclipse, right here, we can now go in and start making modifications to this little guy, uh, to this section here at market depth. And just put in every time this changes, we can now push data, this data into a Redis instance. That's the only change I need to make in this particular program. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, make, maybe make a separate video of that and at the other end, uh, have a C program or a C++ program receive it and showcase that being retrieved out of um, out of uh, the Redis. Okay, so let's leave it there for this particular video um, and uh, let's see what happens because that's our basic communication and um, I need to stress this. Uh, why am I doing Redis? First, I, I, I would have do Zero MQ, which is pretty well the lightest and fastest it talks to anything. The problem with Zero MQ, there's no, um, uh, what should we call, uh, late, um, no replication and no fault tolerance. Um, I think Redis probably might not be as fast as, as uh, Zero MQ, but in terms of performance, because it's open source, it is no SQL, it's fast, but it also gives you well, I just mentioned fault tolerance and the replication. So we can have an instance of Redis. I've shown Redis lots of times in the performance on it. But the other cool thing about Redis is that um, because you can replicate it and you really have no licensing restrictions with it, um, how I'd structure it is you would probably want to have one Redis instance of, uh, let's say, data for now of um, just what I'm showing you here, let's say a feature of Forex or whatever, and, and store that in the one Redis instance. And then you have a, a separate Redis instance that's just purely um, order order um, info, execution or orders. And so you have two separate Redis instances. That's how I'm thinking of doing it um, because you don't wanna stuff both the data and the order information in one Redis instance. I mean. Uh, you, you know, you're gonna gunk it up over time if this goes to a very high number of transactions. 
So you want to keep them all separate. And uh, you can put them onto separate machines, and then again, you can shard them and all that stuff if you really want to go crazy with it. Again, with no restrictions, um, but it is very powerful. So I'm going to stick with that plan, and um, I think that's probably the smartest way of doing it from what I see using NoSQL on top of uh, the performance that you get with Redis. So we'll keep it at that, and I'll show you some further demos. From there, what I can do is I can start writing, uh, go back to all the demos that I've done with the, the futures, uh, little demos of two contracts, if you have a price increase or not, and your hedging and all that, which I've showed in the last bunch of videos. But after I've built all these little communication um, uh, mechanisms, I guess, or, or protocols, whatever you want to call them, um, I'll be able to now move ahead and start building up logic for options and having a repository of contracts and data for those contracts, both for futures and options. And I can store them in however I want. If I want to dedicate an instance of Redis for one particular type of um, future or options, or but for now I'm just going to keep it all in one because it's very simple what I'm doing. But uh, for now, I'm definitely going to keep two separate instances of Redis. So that's the plan. And let's see what, where this goes. But pretty, pretty excited so far, okay? I'll talk to you later.